What's up? This is Boxing Wave. I'm going to speak on last night's fight, uh, Gennady Golovkin versus Curtis Stevens. I just watched the fight again. I watched it last night, but I didn't get a good look at it until this morning. Um, and the fight looks totally different when you watch it, you know, on a big HD TV instead of a little tiny cell phone. I wasn't at home last night, so... Um, whoever saw me tweeting about it, I kind of have a totally different opinion about um, how I felt about the fight last night. Um, so let me get into it. Curtis Stevens, warrior, man. I mean, you got to give him a lot of credit for what he did last night. He did not quit. Even though I said the fight, the fight ended exactly the way I said. I thought it was going to end in TKO in the later rounds. I thought Gennady was going to have him against the ropes and the ref was going to stop the fight. Um, and that's exactly what happened. Now, Stevens, uh, it, at the end of the fourth round, he he started to be more aggressive, you know, and he started fighting the fight that he was supposed to f fight in the first in the first early rounds. See, I knew Gennady was going to go in there and try to break him down slowly. You know, he he respects Curtis Stevens' power and he went in there and played it smart throughout the whole fight, you know. He worked them slowly, especially in the later rounds and like the last round. He went to his body. It was all body. And it was just, it was a hard, brutal fight to watch in the eighth round. Um, but Curtis Stevens was supposed to come out early and fight like that. You know, if he came out in the first, second round and was as aggressive as he was in the fourth and fifth round, he might have, you know knocked out Gennady in the first or second round, you know, because at that time he was he's full of energy and he waited until he was already hurt and busted up some before he started to be more aggressive. I think he felt it was like a time of urgency and he had to come back and he was like, you know what, I have nothing to lose. I might go for it. Might as well go for it all. Um, it was clear from the beginning that Gennady respected his power and he was fighting a, a smart fight. Gennady, the thing about him is his form of defense is to just try to stay on the outside and use his jab. And he does that jump back thing that you see Floyd do sometimes and some other fighters. He doesn't have any head movement. So the fight Curtis, the way Curtis Stevens was supposed to fight is that being that he's a shorter guy, he was supposed to be on the inside. He is an inside fighter, but he was staying on the outside throughout the first three rounds. And he was supposed to be on the inside, duck and weave, and try to get on the inside and land his left and his right hooks. His right hook actually worked more for him. I seen him land a right hook that actually stunned Gennady. I don't know if it was the end of the fourth or the uh, fifth round, but he stunned Gennady a little bit. And, um, you know, backed him up a little bit. But it seemed like Gennady was just like, you know, as soon as Curtis Stevens, Stevens started fighting more aggressive, it seemed like Gennady left himself more open. He stayed on the inside with Curtis Stevens, and he showed more and more. Uh, he showed less and less respect for Curtis Stevens' power. Um, he stayed on the outside more in the beginning of the fight, and then once Curtis Stevens started being more aggressive, he stayed right in the inside with him and um, just try to trade with him. And you know, it just at the eighth round, Curtis just it just. He didn't have anything left in him. He just, uh, what's his name, Golovkin just went straight for the body and just didn't stop. Curtis stayed on the ropes. I mean, his corner was telling him not to get on the ropes, but when you're in there with a guy like that, with that kind of power, and he just keeps attacking to attacking you, um, it's nothing you could do, you know? Um, we already know Curtis Stevens is not the most active fighter. You know, he doesn't have the best stamina. He runs at he gets tired really quick and he's not good with fighting fighting towards a distance and we we seen that in this fight so with that being said Curtis Stevens did look good in there when he was on top of his game he looked good um, I think he even hurt Gennady a little bit um, he was able to land his shots against Gennady when he was really trying to stay on the inside and try to be aggressive but he just couldn't do it consistently um, he gets he got tired out and the body punches started catching up to him. But it was a good fight. Um, 
I would like to see more Curtis Stevens. I would like uh, shout out to Joker Boxing 44 on YouTube. I seen his uh, post fight uh, review on this fight, and he he said he wanted him to fight Gabe Rosado. I was thinking the exact same thing last night when I saw the fight. I would like Curtis Stevens to fight Gabe Rosado. I think that'll be a good fight. Or um, Peter Quinlan as well. You know, I think he he'll do good against. I don't know their relationship. I know they're both from Brooklyn, but I would like to see. Uh, Curtis Stevens fight Gay, Gay Rosado or maybe Peter Quillen or something like that. Um, but as far as Triple G, uh, you know, these guys in the middleweight division is ducking him. I think Daniel Gill recently said uh, that he'll fight Triple G. I don't know how he feels about this, you know, fighting him now after this fight. But uh, I know Daniel Gill said something about, he, you know, he, he's willing to fight him. Um, a lot of people want Triple G to fight Martin Murray and Sergio Martinez. I, you know, he called out Sergio Martinez, but Sergio Martinez most likely is going to fight uh, Cotto or Canelo. Those are two way bigger fights. Canelo just called out uh, Sergio Martinez, and um, I, you know, I expect I expect Sergio Martinez to fight one of these guys at 154. I really don't expect him to fight Triple G right now. So. Um, yeah, so that's how I feel about the fight. I think Triple G is, I, w I would hope, I, I would like Triple G to stay at 160 and try to just clear out the whole division right now. You know, there's a lot of guys at 160 he still hasn't fought, fought. Offer them the money, offer these guys the money so they'll fight you, you know. I know these guys are ducking you, but just offer them the money. Get, get, get these guys paid to fight Triple G, you know. They don't want to fight them, but give them the money, they'll fight them, you know. Um, and that's it. So leave comments. Let me know who you think Triple G should fight next. Um, I think me personally, I think he'll clear everybody out in 160. But I will still like to see the fights happen. I want to see the Martin Murray fight. I want to see the Daniel Gill fight. I even want to see the Peter Quillen fight. Um, even though I think he'll destroy Peter Quillen. And I would like to see Danny Jacobs. Uh, he's supposed to be fighting Peter Quillen next. But I would like to see... Danny Jacobs, uh, you know, I would I would love to see Danny Jacobs fight uh, Triple G. Um, even though a lot of people don't know who Danny Jacobs is, I think he's probably one of the best at 160. And I would like to see the Sergio Martinez fight, even though I don't think it's going to happen. So uh, leave comments, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to USA MVP as well, and follow me on Twitter, Wavy underscore 10. Thanks.